Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome back to Framelines, this is Josh. As you can see, I'm wearing a beanie, which means this video is all about film photography, specifically with the Contax G2, the flashiest 35 mm rangefinder you can buy. Um, this is actually the second one of these I've ever owned. I sold the first one a few years ago. Last year, I then bought another one. I've shot a few rolls of film through it and then I decided to sell this one too. So today I thought I'd talk about what I like about this camera, what I didn't like about it, and then why I've decided to sell it. And then also what I'm gonna be using to shoot film from now on. So let's get into it. So what I like about the G2, obviously it's a beautiful camera. It looks great around your neck. It's a solid piece of titanium. It also has really tactile and really easy to use controls, lovely manual aperture rings on the lenses, great shutter speed dial, exposure compensation. It's easy to switch between continual and single focus. Um, yeah, it's just a real fun, tactile, rewarding shooting experience. Um, it's really easy to load film. It winds on automatically. It rewinds at the end of the roll of film. It has a fantastic shutter sound. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, as a general shooting experience, it is really fun to use. And you do look kind of cool while using it, I guess. Is that important? Absolutely not. Another huge benefit of the Contax G system are the lenses. It has a really solid, compact range of lenses. I bought my second one, this, this version of the G2, with both the 45 and the 28 mm lens. They're both super sharp. They both focus really nicely. So that's what I like about the G2. However, there are a few design quirks, which for me have kind of been deal breakers when using the camera. And there is also one major issue, which I'm gonna go into. So design wise for me, and this is something that's been talked about loads, the viewfinder is absolutely tiny. It's just far too small. And that's a thing in itself, but that combined with where the viewfinder actually is on the camera. So on Leicas or other rangefinder cameras, the viewfinder is normally really far to the, to the side of the camera. Whereas on the G2, it's almost, it's actually verging on the center of the camera body. And it seems really counterintuitive to me to have it so like centralized, it becomes close to almost like a kind of SLR style. For me, the benefit of a rangefinder, and I've spoken about this loads on the channel before, is having it down the side of the camera. It works really nicely for framing and composing photographs for me. And as well, it allows space for my massive nose. So I don't really understand how the viewfinder ended up being so far across the back of the camera. Very strange setup for me. And that has been a real annoyance when using the camera. Something else that's also problematic for me is the fact it's an autofocus rangefinder. And that means you can't really ever 100% tell if your photo is gonna be in focus until you get the roll back because you physically can't see what the lens is focusing on. You're just looking through a hole up here. And although it does say it's found focus, sometimes it may not. This hasn't really ever been an issue for me. I've never really had that many out of focus shots, but just as a kind of reassurance when you're taking photos, I like to actually know that my photo is going to be in focus. And sometimes you really can't tell with the G2. So that is a bit of a problem from time to time. And then the biggest issue for me with the G2 is simply the price. Now I know it's almost a bit of a meme now to talk about film being expensive. Oh, film's expensive, Portra 400 is 100 pounds a roll or something. Yeah, of course, it's getting more and more expensive. And as it is getting more expensive, for me, it seems counterintuitive to have money tied up in a kind of flashy, desirable camera. And I think ultimately nobody really cares what camera you use to get the photo. It's more about the photo itself. And having several hundred or a thousand plus pounds tied up in a camera body, which is all funds that could be used for buying film, developing film, or even getting a train ticket somewhere to explore somewhere new or maybe work on a project. For me, that seems counterintuitive in kind of developing your photography, learning more about photography, working on your own style. So I really think about the best ways to try and save money when shooting film. And for me, there are so many much cheaper 
film cameras out there that do the exact same thing. And of course, the G lenses are really beautiful and nice, but you really have to spend a huge amount of money on getting some professional scans to really see the benefit of that. And I think for the most part, people are either scanning film at home on a flatbed or a Plustec, or using a kind of top-down DSLR scanning on a light pad. And I think 99% of the time, you really won't be able to tell much of a difference or really see the benefit of these Zeiss lenses. I'm sure people will let me know in the comments below if that's not the case, but in my experience, that has been the case. So, what am I gonna use instead? Well, I've got here my trusty little Canon EOS, 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 EOS 300. This body cost me 15 pounds just over a year ago. The lens itself was 55 pounds. So we're looking at a 70 pound film setup here compared to this 1200 pound plus Contax G2 setup. And it does all the exact same things. It has continuous shooting, it has autofocus, it has aperture priority, it winds the film on for you, you can select the focus point. It's an advanced camera. This came out in 1999 and they continued making them until 2002. Um, yeah, it does everything for a fraction of the price of the G2. It just doesn't look as nice. It feels a bit cheap and nasty. It looks a little bit like a toy camera in a way, but I've shot several rolls of film through this and I've been really happy with, with the results. The auto metering nails it every time. Focusing as well, with it being an SLR, you're looking straight through the lens so you can tell every time if you've achieved focus or not, so you know whether you should take the photo. I admit it isn't as fast as the G2, but this is a very old autofocus lens and I've tried it on more modern lenses and it does pick up, the speed does pick up, so that's not something hugely to worry about. But for me, the point I'm trying to make really is you can save a huge amount of money on these maybe less cool, less desirable old SLR cameras that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. They will do exactly the same thing as a more kind of trendy, cool camera like the G2. Maybe you won't look as cool while taking the photograph, but for me, the actual end result is more important than having that extra money freed up to buy film, spend money on maybe a nicer scanner like a Plustec or an Epson V800, for example, or just hopping on a train to the seaside or somewhere new working on a project. It seems like a, a fair trade-off to me. So for that reason, I'm gonna sell the G2, free up some money, and maybe travel around the UK a bit and maybe pick up a few rolls of film and shoot a bit more film. I also wanted to touch on the fact that these are autofocus SLR systems. This Canon in particular uses the EF mount. There are, I think, 80 plus EF lenses out there and they all work on Canon DSLRs as well. You can chop and change lenses between the two systems. So if you wanted to have a complementary digital setup and a film setup and swap lenses between the two, that's something you can do with these older film SLRs. And again, that's another great way to save money and just really familiarize yourself with the lenses across both systems as well. So before we move on, I wanted to take a moment to talk about our sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. So I've been using Squarespace for a number of years now, before they even sponsored Framelines. They've been hosting my photographic portfolio, which I use to reach clients and collate my photography projects. They've got a great assortment of customizable templates. You can upload your own logo or delve into their huge range of typefaces and really build your own custom design to suit your brand. You can set up your own domain or online store. It's quick, easy, and intuitive. To give Squarespace a go or to start a free trial, it's super straightforward. Use the link in the description to get 10% off or visit squarespace.com framelines. So that's why I'm selling my G2. I'm slightly sad to see it go, but for me, it's just not a viable option for shooting film anymore. I'd much rather have a cheaper, less cool film camera, save a huge amount of money, put the money into buying photo books, buying film, traveling around, working on projects. That seems like the sensible way to go. Um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think the G2 is overrated? Would you try one of these cheaper SLR cameras? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching along. See you next time. <laughs>